Today, I want to speak to you about something that might seem paradoxical at first glance, the beauty of brokenness. When we think of brokenness, we usually associate it with pain, weakness, and vulnerability. We see it as a flaw, a defect, something that needs to be fixed or avoided. But what if I told you that brokenness can also be a source of strength, growth, and transformation? What if I told you that brokenness can lead to healing, not just physical, but also emotional and spiritual? What if I told you that brokenness can be beautiful? To understand what I mean, let's turn to the Bible, where we find many examples of brokenness and how God uses it for His glory. Let's start with the story of Joseph in Genesis. Joseph was the favorite son of Jacob. But his jealous brothers sold him into slavery and told their father that he had been killed by a wild animal. Joseph ended up in Egypt, where he was bought by Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials. But when Potiphar's wife falsely accused him of trying to rape her, Joseph was thrown into prison. Yet even in prison, God was with Joseph and gave him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Eventually, Joseph was released from prison and became the second in command of all of Egypt with the power to save his family and many others from a severe famine. What can we learn from Joseph's story? First, we see that brokenness can come from external circumstances that are beyond our control, such as betrayal, injustice, and persecution. Second, we see that brokenness can affect our identity relationships, and sense of purpose. Joseph went from being a beloved son to a despised slave, from a faithful servant to a falsely accused criminal, from a forgotten prisoner to a powerful ruler. Yet through all of his trials and tribulations, Joseph remained faithful to God and trusted in his plan. In Psalm 34 verse 18 we read, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. This verse reminds us that God is not distant or indifferent to our pain and suffering. On the contrary, He is near and compassionate, and He can heal us from the inside out. But how does God heal us? Through the power of His love and grace. In Isaiah 53 verse 5 we read, But He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on Him, and by His wounds we are healed. This verse speaks of the ultimate brokenness, that of Jesus Christ on the cross. Jesus was broken for us so that we could be made whole. His death and resurrection opened the way for us to be forgiven, redeemed, and restored to a right relationship with God. But the healing that Jesus offers is not just a one-time event. It is a lifelong process that involves surrender, repentance, and faith. In Romans 12 verse 1 we read, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. This passage reminds us that true worship is not just about singing songs or attending church services. It is about offering ourselves to God as living sacrifices, which means giving up our own desires and submitting to His will. It is also about renewing our minds, which means changing the way we think and perceive things according to God's truth and wisdom. The Apostle Paul is another example of someone who experienced brokenness and found healing in Christ. Before his conversion, Paul was a zealous persecutor of the early church, arresting and imprisoning Christians. But on the road to Damascus, he had a powerful encounter with Jesus that transformed his life. Paul went from being a persecutor to a preacher, from an enemy of Christ to a servant of Christ. Yet he also endured many trials and hardships for the sake of the gospel, including beatings, imprisonment, and shipwrecks. In 2 Corinthians 12 verse 7, Paul writes, Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. 
Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This passage reminds us that even the most faithful and dedicated servants of God are not immune to brokenness. Paul had a thorn in his flesh that he could not remove, but he also had a deeper revelation of God's grace and power that sustained him through his weakness. In fact, Paul learned to embrace his weaknesses and even boast about them, not because he was masochistic or delusional, but because he understood that his weakness was an opportunity for God's strength to be displayed. What about you? Have you experienced brokenness in your life? Maybe you have gone through a divorce, a loss of a loved one, a health crisis, a financial setback, a betrayal, or a failure. Maybe you feel like you are at the end of your rope, that there is no hope or meaning left in your life. If that's you, I want to encourage you today to look to Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. Hebrews 12 verse 2. Jesus knows what it's like to be broken. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Isaiah 53 verse 3. He wept over Jerusalem and over the death of his friend Lazarus. John 11 verse 35. He was betrayed by one of his own disciples, denied by another, and abandoned by all the rest. Matthew 26 verse 47. He was mocked, beaten, and crucified, and he cried out to his father, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27 verse 46. But Jesus also knows what it's like to be healed. He rose from the dead on the third day, conquering sin and death once and for all. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 55. He appeared to his disciples and showed them his wounds, proving that he was alive and victorious. John 20 verse 19. Jesus is not just a historical figure or a religious icon. He is the living Son of God who is present with us by his Holy Spirit. He is the one who can heal our brokenness, not just by removing our pain or problems, but by giving us his peace and his power. He is the one who can transform our weaknesses into strengths, our sorrows into joy, and our losses into gain. He is the one who can make us whole, not just in this life, but also in the life to come. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts that are broken and weary. We have experienced pain and loss, and we feel like we are at the end of our rope. But we know that you are the God of all comfort and the one who can heal our brokenness. We pray that you would pour out your grace and your mercy upon us today. Lord, we confess that we have tried to fix our brokenness on our own. We have looked for solutions in our own strength and wisdom, but we have come up empty. We know that only you can heal our broken hearts and restore our souls. We pray that you would help us to surrender our brokenness to you and to trust in your goodness and your love. We thank you, Lord, for the example of Jesus Christ who knew what it was like to be broken. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. He wept over Jerusalem and over the death of his friend Lazarus. He was betrayed by one of his own disciples, denied by another, and abandoned by all the rest. He was mocked, beaten, and crucified, and he cried out to you, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But we also thank you, Lord, for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which proves that he is the living Son of God who has conquered sin and death. We thank you for the hope and the promise of new life that we have in him. We pray that you would help us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy set before him, endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Lord, we pray that you would help us to see the beauty in our brokenness. We know that you can take our pain and turn it into something beautiful. 
We pray that you would help us to trust in your sovereignty and your wisdom, even when we don't understand why we have to go through difficult times. We pray that you would help us to find meaning and purpose in our suffering, and that you would use it to refine our character and to draw us closer to you. We pray for those who are experiencing brokenness in their lives right now. We pray for those who are dealing with physical or emotional pain, for those who are struggling with addiction or mental illness, for those who are going through a divorce or a separation, for those who have lost a loved one, for those who are facing financial difficulties, for those who are dealing with the consequences of sin, and for those who are struggling with their faith. We pray that you would be near to them, Lord, and that you would comfort them with your presence. We pray that you would give them the strength to endure and that you would help them to trust in your goodness and your love. We pray that you would heal their broken hearts and restore their souls. We pray that you would use their brokenness to bring glory to your name and to advance your kingdom. We pray for ourselves, Lord, that you would help us to embrace our own brokenness and to find healing in Christ. We pray that you would help us to surrender our lives to you and to trust in your plan for us. We pray that you would use our brokenness to make us more like Jesus and to bring us closer to you. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.